Hello, and thank you for joining us in today's webinar, Enhancing Interpretation During Cultural Orientation. My name is Michal Panner, and I'm joined by my trusty colleague, Ella Fowler. Ella, please introduce yourself. Hi, good morning. I'm Ella, and I'm here to support Michal. If you have any technical issues today, feel free to go ahead and ping me in the chat, and I'll do my best to assist you. Thank you for joining us. As a reminder, we will be recording this session and sharing it with all registrants in an email following the webinar. So during today's session, uh, we will introduce and review CORE's multilingual CO glossary, uh, review other related resources, and spend some time brainstorming ways to properly utilize the glossary in CO delivery and interpretation. Today's objective is for you, CO providers and interpreters, to identify at least one way to incorporate the glossary into CO sessions. Please remember your participation matters to us and we encourage you to comment in the chat, respond to the polls and participate during the discussion we're going to have in the latter part of the webinar. Uh, to open the chat, you will uh, click on your menu. It can be at the top or bottom of your screen. Uh, it can either be visible to you as chat or you'll have to click the more button with the three dots above it and click chat and the chat window will open and you'll be able to, to communicate with us. Before we start, uh, I'd like to do a, a quick check and uh, see whether you've had a chance to use the multilingual CO glossary, yes or no. Ella is going to launch a poll. The poll is now launched and should be on your screen. Ella, I'm not able to see the poll, so if you can let me know when uh, we have results. Absolutely. You have 15 more seconds to complete the poll. The poll will close in five seconds. Okay, I have now ended the poll and I am sharing the results. So it looks like about 30 people, 39% um, have used uh, the CO glossary and about 61% have not used the CO glossary. That is great and that is why we're here today. So for those of you who said yes and did manage to have time to use the poll and in, um, the poll, the CO glossary and interact with it, uh, if you answered yes, please take a moment to share your experience in the chat box. We would like to uh, to hear how your experience was. Printed mm -hmm. material to hand out to clients. We used to share glossary with interpreters. That is that is wonderful and a good um, a good best practice as a handout. Very informative. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, keep it coming. Uh, I will take a look. Very informative. Great. Um, let's move on because we are on the clock. Um, in order to unify and harmonize the translation of cultural orientation and resettlement terms most used in CO session, CORE, in collaboration with the CO leaders, created the Multilingual Cultural Orientation Glossary. The glossary currently contains 216 terms under 15 categories, reflecting the overseas and domestic objectives and indicators. Once translated, the glossary was reviewed by CO providers and interpreters um, and interpreters from resettlement support centers, Africa, Asia, MENA, and TUMI for accuracy. And some of your colleagues are here on the call today and thank you again. The glossary ensures that interpreters are familiar with CO and resettlement specific uh, vocabulary to further reinforce consistent messaging across the CO continuum from pre-departure to post-arrival and provide practical solutions during CO. So while Ella is now sharing the link in the chat box, I'm going to share my browser and show you where you can find the multilingual CO glossary. <clears throat> Thank you, Ella. Um, Ella, just let me know, can you see my browser? Yes. Great. Uh, so you will find the multilingual CO glossary on the Working with Interpreters page on the core website. And it's currently the featured resource on this page. 
uh, this is where you can find the actual glossary. I would like you now to take a couple of minutes to explore this resource. There's a drop down menu right here and then post in the chat box, which of the glossaries available languages will be most useful to you in your CO sessions. You have a couple of minutes to respond in the chat. Okay, I see some answers already coming in. Arabic, Burmese, Arabic and Dari, Burmese. Kiswahili, Arabic, Arabic, Burmese, I think we're seeing a pattern. Kinyarwanda, Rwanda, Swahili. Uh-huh, yes, and we have a question, which I will, okay. Farsi and Kurdish, Tigrinya, mm-hmm. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, and Kinyarwanda, Swahili, Burmese, very good. Uh, to recap, uh, the available, the glossary is available in six languages, Arabic, Burmese, Dari, Kini Rwanda, Russian, and Congolese, Swahili. Um, for the language requests that just came in the, in the chat for the Kurdish, the Farsi, the Tigrinya, requests for additional languages need to be coordinated with PRM for approval. So we will elevate your requests uh, to PRM and keep you updated. You will have a chance to share uh, additional uh, language requests in your post webinar survey. So please be sure to fill it out. We will give you the link at the end of the webinar. So uh, I would like us to review the glossaries menu uh, on the page to clarify its use. So as you can see, each language version is available both as a Word document and as a PDF. Uh, I would like you to note that each file type will download slightly differently. So the Word file, I'll take Arabic as an example. The Word file, upon clicking on it, will immediately and directly download um, from your browser to the um, folder where you save all of your downloads. However, the PDF will download slightly differently. It will open in a different, in another tab, as you can see here. And then in order to download it, you will need to go and click this download arrow at the top right-hand corner. Uh, now let's take a look at the actual glossary. We already have the Arabic version open. Um, the table of contents displays the 15 categories of the glossary. Once you select a hyperlink category, it will uh, take you to that section of the document and you'll be able to review the terms nested under that category, their definition, and the translation in the target language. So if I'm choosing this first one, now in this case, I just like to know, because I did not download the PDF to my computer to save time, the category opened in a different tab up here, but once it's on your computer, it will stay within the document itself. So no worries about that. Um, as you can see, here's the category, the term, the translation, the term in English, its definition and the translation in the target language. Uh, the categories in the glossary are based on the overseas and domestic objectives and indicators. However, we did add this category you're looking at right now, key institutions category, since these terms often come up during CO and require their own translation. We would like to note that we consider the CO glossary to be a living document so CORE would like you, CO providers, interpreters, caseworkers, and anyone else using the glossary to continuously suggest additional terms. If you would like to submit a new term, provide feedback on existing terms, or have a general comment, please email us at coresourceexchange at rescue.org with the words CO glossary in the subject line. And Ella will post the email in the chat box and we look forward to receiving your feedback. So let's do a, a quick knowledge check. Uh, Ella is going to launch a poll. And the question is, how many languages is the multilingual CO glossary available in? Five languages, six languages, or seven? The poll has now closed. And uh, most of the folks selected six languages, 61%, and 30% uh, said seven languages. Well, six languages is the correct answer. Very good. Let's do another quick knowledge check. Ella is going to launch the poll. What languages is the multilingual CO glossary available in? All right, the poll has now ended and I am sharing the results. 
The majority of respondents selected option C, Arabic, Burmese, Dari, Kinyawanda, Russian, and Congolese, Swahili. Very good. You oh you have it as option C. Okay, the <laughs> the presentation is showing it as option B, but that is the correct answer. Arabic, Burmese, Dari, Kenya, Rwanda, Russian, and Congolese Swahili. Very good. Uh, now I would like to uh, take a moment to go back and look at the working with interpreters page and review the entire uh, page. CORE developed this page to assist CO providers and interpreters to collaborate in CO sessions. As you can see, in addition to the multilingual CO glossary, the page has tips for CO providers who work with interpreters, which you can scroll through with this feature right here, as well as tips for interpreters who deliver CO. Again, you have a feature that you can scroll through right here. At the bottom of the page, you will find additional helpful resources. We welcome your suggestions in addition to the resources section. If there are resources that you think should be included in this page or you would like to see them here, please email us again at coresourceexchange at rescue.org and we will be happy to include the links. The page also directs you to yet another resource that I would like to review the Working Effectively with Interpreters course. Uh, this lives on CORE's online learning system. If you go to the top of the page right here and click on online learning courses link, uh, it will take you uh, to CORE's online learning system. And uh, if you are an existing user, you can log in. If not, you will need to register and your registration will be approved within one business day. Now here is the actual page of working effectively with interpreters course. Uh, this is the page that you will get to once you register and, and have access. Uh, it lives on the online learning system. Uh, as SEO providers and interpreters, you work with refugees who have limited English language skills. And as you know, well-trained interpreters, as well as good communication and coordination between provider and interpreter, play an essential role in CO. This course explains the role, roles and responsibilities of the CO provider and the interpreter and assists in identifying the steps you should take to ensure that you are prepared for CO sessions. The course reviews, reviews topics such as pre-session preparation, positioning, interpreter skills, and also offers a few practice scenarios. So let's take a look inside. I'm going to click on the course um, right here. As you can see, this is your uh, navigation bar to the left. Uh, here are the topics I mentioned. Uh, it's easy to use and includes clear texts and visuals. Let's look at the positioning section, for example. You can see it right here. A very clear and intuitive interface. And you can also listen to the text um, in addition to reading it or instead of reading it. Um, we do recommend this course both to, to both CO providers and interpreters, uh, and we consider it foundational to staff that participates in delivering CO, as it will allow you to establish best practices in your CO session. And here's a little fun fact, since it's rollout in 2017, this course has ranked as the second highest completed course under course offerings with over 1,100 individual course completions. Uh, I would like to now move on and share the presentation again. And we will do, um, and we will discuss uh, a scenario. So I would like you to think about a scenario concerning interpretation and explanation of resettlement terms and concepts in CO in general. So during a CO session, while discussing the topic of housing, refugees understand that they will live in a house in the US. What may have caused the confusion? You have two minutes to share your thoughts in the chat box and we will discuss more uh, later.
we're getting some answers. The way the interpretation was done, there may not be a suitable translation in the target language. Daphne, yes, thank you. A separate house compared to an apartment. House versus apartment versus accommodation. That is correct. Interpreter translating the term incorrectly or inaccurately, the translation. Give me more, give me more answers. Do we have interpreters among us this morning or this afternoon, depends on where you are. Interpreter misunderstood the difference in the terms or clients heard the English and thought they understood. Very good. Anyone else would like to, to comment? Yes. Jerome, appropriate vocabulary may have not been applied. Katie, depending on the way house was used. So uh, this is uh, most likely a linguistic issue. Let's take a look at our, our housing example. So in some languages, Kini Rwanda, for example, uh, house and housing are either interchangeable or housing only has a secondary meaning of residence, uh, but a primary meaning of house. So how can you as SEO providers and interpreters counteract this potential issue? What are the possible solutions? Uh, I would like you to post in the chat box and note whether you are an interpreter, a SEO provider, or both, and respond to these two specific questions appearing now on the screen. Interpreters, how can you avoid this obstacle? And SEO providers, what will you do to correct the misunderstanding during the session? Here is your hint. In addition, if you would like to reference resources, but again, for you to uh, post in the chat, Interpreters, how can you avoid the obstacle? And CO providers, what will you do to correct the misunderstanding during the CO session? Please note when you respond if you are a CO provider, an interpreter, or both. So provide visuals, knowledge checks of participants. Correct. I'm assuming the response came from a CO provider. Describe what is specifically meant with the housing in the context CO provider. CEO provider, explain the term housing. That's right. I'm just going to move some of the answers here so we'll have room. Another CEO provider, interpreters, we want to hear from you. Please post in the chat. If you're here with us, we would like to hear your take on this. We would like to hear your take on this um, scenario. CEO provider, uh, I would like a cheat sheet of common issues like this for each language we regularly use. Predictable linguistic issues, so as a provider, we can speak accordingly and carefully around these issues. That is correct. You will come across many uh, terms that either do not exist in the target language or do not exist in the country uh, the clients came from. And it is very important to know what you might be up against when you, uh, before you start your CO session so you can tackle these uh, potential issues and um, uh, preempt them. Uh, identify, there it is, identify challenging terms ahead of the session with interpreter and CEO provider. CEO provider response, um, I'm just gonna move this a little bit. Uh, be deliberate and share the difference with the interpreter, correct. Communication between yourself and your interpreter is essential. Your interpreter is your uh, uh, wingman or wingwoman, your sidekick, you are a team. You get to the CEO session, you have to work together and it's better to meet before to uh, coordinate and collaborate on what you're going to talk about and what the pitfalls might be during the CO session. Group discussion on expectations with the clients. That is a, that is a, a, a great strategy. Another response from a CO provider. Uh, have different pictures available. Let me just move this text. Uh, thank you, Ella, for posting. Uh, have different pictures available. See if, and yes, and, and visuals are always helpful and always important. Um, I, for one, can attest that I'm not uh, a native speaker, as I'm sure you can hear. And uh, sometimes visuals just do the trick. You see a picture, you see an image, and you say, oh, I get it. So have different pictures available, see if responses from clients fit with expectations. Uh, if everybody keeps referring to a house in their questions and not apartments. Uh, Pre-session, make sure interpreter knows what we will talk about. Very good, correct. Again, a pre-session, 
is a very, very important tool that you have at your disposal before your CO session, meet with your interpreter, talk, exchange ideas, exchange knowledge. We are going to be running out of space. Uh, CO provider have, I think we have this twice. So I'm going to remove this a lot to give you a little more room. Um, more answers. Review the glossary. That's right. Review the glossary to identify terms that may be challenging for housing or otherwise. So I, one of the resources that you can use is the multilingual CO glossary, which we are talking about today. This glossary has terms to help you during your CO session. Please see it as uh, an inseparable tool of your CO session and continuously use it and share it with your interpreter. Or if you're an interpreter, please refer to it as often as possible. Again, if you find that there are um, terms that are not there that you would like us to add or definitions or translations that you'd like us to tweak, please email us. Like I said, it's a living document. We would like this to be a collaborative effort. Uh, in, oh, and we're hearing from an interpreter. Avoid the translation in the standard language and use simple, simpler language, common dialect. Very good idea. And um, that is something that requires uh, knowledge of a, of a native speaker often. So that is why your interpreter is such a valuable tool for you as a CU provider. And what else are we getting here? I'm going to move this a little bit. Train interpreters ahead of time. It is a partnership, correct. Interpreters flag any terms that may cause confusion for the clients and housing comparison. Correct, you know, in some places, uh, apartments are not as standard or, or as a clear thing as, as, as we have right here in the States, for example, or, or any other country. Some countries, people don't have apartments or are not used to living in apartments. So uh, creating a comparison, sharing visuals, uh, taking, Clients for a tour, if possible, in an apartment uh, complex would be very helpful. Okay, thank you for these great answers. Um, now, are there, again, a question to you. Are there any other um, terms, challenging concepts or terms that in your um, vast experience, I'm sure, cause confusion during CO? We would like you to tell us, and Ella will post them, on uh, this side of the um, board, um, please post in the chat box what other uh, examples of challenging terms or concepts tend to cause confusion during CO. And if you can tell us how you addressed them. Uh, word, an appointment doesn't exist in Ukrainian Russian, often confusing for new arrivals. That is, again, very interesting. Uh, if you would also like to uh, follow up and share how you address that or how you explain the difference that would be something that we all would like to hear. Adjusting status, that never makes sense <laughs> in Arabic or Farsi. Yes, uh, I can attest to being confused with adjusting status myself. And um, it takes time, it takes time. Health insurance, Medicaid, absolutely. Uh, from feedback that we have received from the field, topics such as healthcare, US laws, Public assistance with terms such as SNAP, Medicaid, WIC uh, are generally complicated and can be confusing to clients. Uh, I'm sure you have come across these terms. And I would like to note that these terms exist in the CO glossary. So you can find these terms. They have a clear definition. They are translated into the six languages we're offering the CO glossary in. So again, the CO glossary can really be uh, a, a companion and a friend for you uh, during CO, both uh, CO providers and interpreters. You have the definition, you can use it and you can interpret that definition to help your clients understand. Um, let's see what else is coming in. I'm just going to move proactive in Burmese. Wow, that is interesting. Uh, if you would like to share how you were able to explain that, that would be fascinating. Sorry, uh, Michal, it was right underneath. Uh, the interpreter and I will discuss the definition of the word prior to class. And I tried I to remember to give the interpreter more time to describe this word during class. Very good. Thank you for, 
Thank you for telling me not to move that sentence. Talking about sexual harassment versus sexual abuse. Very hard to explain in English on its own, but even harder in another language. Yes, I understand. I just give a thorough explanation of each. And I'm sure um, whoever, uh, thank you for, for sharing that. I'm sure there's also not an easy uh, or simple topic to discuss uh, and, and can be sometimes triggering to, uh, to clients. So that is, uh, that is a, a good effort. Um, this term also appears, these terms appear in the CO glossary with a definition and a translation. Uh, hopefully you can find that helpful. More answers coming in. Uh, Social security, are these two related uh, to each other, Ella? Yeah, once again, uh, the first one went in when I wasn't done. So the social security card in most languages needs to be deleted. Okay. Social security card, I try to explain to them saying that it's a combination uh, of a type of national ID card and tax account number. Okay, social security card, you will find social security in, let me move this around a little bit, in the CO glossary and uh, it will be helpful to you during your CO session. Another one down here. Some languages do not have the word credit. Need to explain the definition from Lori. Very good. Uh, so as you can see, yeah, the, the, it, it runs the gamut um, and there are so many terms and, and uh, concepts that you have to explain during CO uh, and it is hard work, it's complicated, it's language, it's culture. Uh, the CO glossary can help you. We have those definitions. And again, if one definition is, or some definitions are not there or terms are not there, please let us know. Uh, I would like to, in thank you for this great discussion. And, and Ella, any more that you would like to? No, food stamps versus um, nap. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's you. a few, there's a few others that just came into the chat, um, like identity, uh, credit, um, and CORE does have a money management fact sheet that has some basic uh, translation terms and assistance. Um, and welcome money, the AMPM concept and dates are a few other things that have come in. Very good. Ella, if you can save the slide, I will transfer us to the next one. I will it has been saved. Okay, it's been saved. I'm going to move over to the next slide. Uh, oh, Elena, oh. Good, good flag regarding the um, regarding okay. the taxes and filing taxes as well. Another complicated issue. Oh my God, taxes. Yeah, tax tax day is coming up, people. April fifteenth. Uh, be prepared. So, discussion recap. Uh, if you're a CEO provider, and many of you have already hit on some of these points in our previous slide, and thank you. If you're a CEO provider before your session, contact the interpreter prior to the session. Provide them with this multilingual CEO glossary. Inform the interpreter of the topic of the CEO session and ask them to review the specific terms that they will interpret during the session. Check with the interpreter if there are any terms that can cause confusion for the clients in the specific language that they will interpret into and perform knowledge checks with the clients to confirm understanding. You have mentioned many of these points uh, in our previous slide. If you're an interpreter, contact the CEO provider prior to the session. Ask the provider what the session topic will be and what specific terms they would like you to use. Refer to the multilingual CEO glossary and review the terms. We have the definitions as well to help you. Be aware of terms that may have the potential to confuse the client in that specific language and make the CEO provider aware of such examples so that they are prepared to address this uh, during the session. I would like to thank you for your feedback and discussion today. We hope that you were able to identify at least one way to incorporate the uh, multilingual CO glossary into your CO delivery. If you have any additional feedback, please do not hesitate to reach out to CORE, CO Resource Exchange at rescue.org. Uh, we will share the recording of the webinar with all registrants via email within a week's time. Now, before you go, uh, I would like to ask you to dedicate five more minutes to fill out the post webinar survey. And it will include that language question that, that we mentioned earlier in the webinar. Ella uh, will post the link in the chat box. If you have any additional questions, we will remain online for another 10 minutes or so to answer them. 
If not, thank you again for joining us and have a great rest of the day. And thank you for the great discussion.